ambitious. Play ambitious talk show. Hello everybody, I am Lily Mae and welcome to another episode of the Glambitious Talk Show. As you know, I like to connect you with dynamic women from around the world and today is no different. Miss Octavia, introduce yourself to the viewers. Hello, hello everyone. I am Octavia Connor. I am the CEO of Say Yes to Profits, which is a full service accounting firm. And so our goal is to help entrepreneurs manage and master their finances so that they say yes to profits. I love it because I always say yes to profits. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so tell us, what is a, a virtual CFO or what does a virtual CFO do exactly? Yes. So a virtual CFO will help you truly understand your finances. Mm -hmm. They're going to help you develop the strategy in order to take your business from where you are to where you desire to be. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times entrepreneurs are not clear of how to use their numbers mm -hmm. to really grow their company. Mm -hmm. And so they're just working day by day, hoping they generate a profit, mm -hmm. um, hoping that they make it to the next level when in actuality you need that financial strategy. And so that's where the virtual CFO comes in. She develops that strategy. She creates the system, the processes, the procedures, and map out the exact, as I like to call it, money moves mm -hmm. you make to get to the next level. Gotcha. And that is so important because as an entrepreneur, your income fluctuates mm -hmm. significantly. So un unlike someone who's, you know, uh, an employee, they can expect a specific check every two weeks. Yep. As an entrepreneur, you may have an amazing month and then the next month is like, you know, yes. birds chirping. So I could definitely see the value in what you're offering. What would you say are the top three financial mistakes that business owners make? So the top three financial mistakes, number one, would be not having a bookkeeping system at all, right? And so again, it goes back to your focus on growing your business and making the money, mm -hmm. but you're not managing the money. Mm -hmm. You're not mastering what it means to truly be profitable. Mm -hmm. So that's the first mistake, um, not having a bookkeeping system. And then those that do have a bookkeeping system, they're not keeping it organized. It's mm -hmm. not accurate. It's not up to date. And so it's almost like you're not even using what you have in mm -hmm. order to get to the next level. Right. But the foundation of a truly profitable, successful business is its finances. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So the second mistake is having a bookkeeping system, but not using the information. Mm -hmm. The third mistake is not thinking about taxes proactively. Mm -hmm. And so the average entrepreneur overpays according to the IRS in taxes eleven thousand wow. dollars because they're not proactive mm -hmm. at tax strategy mm -hmm. and tax planning. Wow. So not only do you pay your portion but you give the IRS a tip on top of it. And we can't we can't be tipping this, y'all. <laughs> not them. <laughs> I know. Tip everybody right. except them. <laughs> so yes. No, I think that's important because there are so many entrepreneurs that we saw, especially during the pandemic, go through a significant distress like or close their business and it's probably because there wasn't that preparation in advance mm -hmm. for when you have to take a year where things are slow or two yeah. years. So I could definitely, you know, see how as entrepreneurs we focus on the business but mm -hmm. not the and business. Not the business, <laughs> right. The money is the business and right. it's like we want to do the business part that we're experts at mm -hmm. and that we need to hire someone to do the finance part because she's an expert at that. Okay. And I, now one of the talking points that you gave us was to tell us about your broke, busted, and disgusted <laughs> journey. I didn't want y'all to think that I called her journey <laughs> broke, busted, and disgusted. No. Okay. These are her words. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes. Tell us about that. <laughs> Listen, I am not ashamed of it, but you know, when I first started into the world of entrepreneurship, and honestly, this is the reason why I'm so passionate about the virtual CFO and the business advisory side. Mm -hmm. I came from corporate America, mm -hmm. right? I was an accountant for 20 something years. I had climbed the corporate ladder. So I knew bookkeeping. I knew accounting, right? But when I jumped out into the world of entrepreneurship, I ended up falling flat on my face mm -hmm. within about 12 to 14 months, 16 mm -hmm. months, somewhere around in that area, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I call it, that was my time period or my chapter of being broke, busted, and totally mm -hmm. disgusted. Mm -hmm. um, more money was going out faster than it was coming in. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I had clients. Mm -hmm. I had some pretty big clients, but I wasn't managing my own money, right? I was doing the business of business, but mm -hmm. not really being a business owner. Right. Um, and so I was one month away from foreclosure oh, on a home that I had custom built from mm -hmm. the ground up. Ooh. 
I had just bought my first ever brand new car off the lot, mm. right? I was literally able to look out the window and see the repo man oh looking God. for my vehicle because I was hiding it in my garage. And there were my nights I couldn't even feed my kids if it wasn't for my grandmother. Um, and so I had to start over. I had to go back to corporate America part-time and rebuild my business. Mm -hmm. And when I rebuilt my business, I was able to come back out the second time mm -hmm. as a multi six figure business owner. Yes. Now I call that chapter breakthrough. Yes. So broke, busted, disgusted, breakthrough. Mm -hmm. I love it. What I realized is that it wasn't the bookkeeping that did it, mm -hmm. right? It was the financial strategy. Mm -hmm. It was creating systems around my money. It was proactively managing every single dollar that entered mm -hmm. and left my business. That took us from being broken busted, having a negative $152 mm -hmm. in my bank account, mm -hmm. and that was the account that I would look at, to a multi six figure profitable business right. multi six figures at the bottom line mm -hmm. right there's a difference between revenue and and profit right. so that's what took us there wow. so yeah well you know i appreciate you sharing your broke busted and disgusted <laughs> journey because truth be told many of us have that experience privately mm -hmm. and we may not be brave enough to share it and when you think about it you know financial literacy is not something they really teach in schools well not back in my day because right. i'm a seasoned saint so i don't know right. what they teach it now but they didn't, I am. But they didn't, you know, teach us anything about financial literacy growing up. And so many of us had to have like a similar experience to you where we become business owners and we like are trying to figure it out and then we hit rock bottom. But I love the breakthrough part of your story because there may be someone watching that is in that busted and disgusted place yeah. and they can see that there is something on the other side of it. Yeah. And so with the upcoming election, whew, Lord, which stresses me out to think about it, yeah. truth be told, you know, um, why is that important specifically to entrepreneurs? So I always say this. I am not in any shape, form, or fashion, hear me clearly, <laughs> telling you who to vote for. Mm -hmm. What I am telling you is that as an entrepreneur, it's so important for you to understand the advantages and disadvantages of each candidate as it relates to you as an entrepreneur. You see, we think about that on the personal side, mm -hmm. right? But a lot of times we don't think about that on the business side. Right. And so if you're truly in business to build an empire, to grow your company, there are things that that is going to happen that will affect you. Mm -hmm. For example, taxes and the tax rules and regulations, right? There are certain things that you need to know. And so when you decide to cast your vote, really take into consideration what each candidate is going to bring to the table or take away for you as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. That's my advice. Yes, I think that's great advice because oftentimes we don't think of it about, you know, we don't think about it like that. Mm -hmm. We we focus on what the media is talking about, yes. what issues the media is talking about, or what issues that the they're leading with. Yes. And and there I can't say that either of them have really led with any specific entrepreneur issues right. on the front, you know? Right. So maybe it's quiet, but, but it's there. Okay. Oh, it's absolutely mm -hmm. there. You're helping people think about entrepreneurship, not even just from the financial end, but holistically. Yes. Because yes. there's so many things we should be taking into account yes. as it relates to, you know, our business. Now, what does it mean to say yes to profits? What does it mean to say yes to profits? It means that as an entrepreneur, you have a few things. And I, I call them the six pillars to say yes to profits. You have clarity, you have, well, let me back up. You have confidence okay. first. Mm -hmm. So confidence just centers around your money mindset. Oftentimes businesses are led by entrepreneurs who unfortunately has a scarcity mindset, mm -hmm. right? And so first you have confidence, then you have clarity around your finances. Then you control every dollar that enters and leaves your business no matter what. That's going to lead to more cash flow. Okay, and so once you have more cash flow, you're able to command that your life operates in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So you're able to really say, okay, I want to live a life of comfort or no, you know what? I just want to live a life of luxury and wealth, mm -hmm. but you have that cash flow to do that. So confidence, clarity, control, cash flow, and I feel like I am missing one, command. It's, it's, I'm missing one. I'll think of that one later. But yes, but yes. those are some good ones to start with because to your initial point, a lot of people have a poverty mindset. Yes. They do, or a scarcity mindset, and that does 
impact you in so many different ways. It impacts your pricing. Like I talk a lot about charging your worth. Oh, yes. And that's a part of this this financial strategy he's talking about. Like, are you even charging enough for the services to make that multiple six figure profit? Yes. Right. And so there's so many elements to it. I love that you, you know, gave the few you did. You yes. think of the other I got it. I got okay, it. Go ahead. Commitment. <laughs> Commitment. Commitment. Okay. Commitment is important because as you mentioned earlier, there are there are ebbs and flows as mm-hmm. an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. You know, one month, one year, one quarter, things are going amazing. Mm-hmm. The next month, year, quarter, you're like, what, what is going on? <laughs> what happened? But if you're committed to it, mm-hmm. you will weather the storm and you will become a different person when you get out of it. Mm-hmm. So that when the flow comes back, you can handle it even better. Yes. So those are the six pillars to say yes to profit. I love it. So give us those six pillars yes. one more time. <laughs> so you have confidence. Mm-hmm. You have clarity. You have control. You have commitment, cash flow, and then you can command. Perfect, perfect. Now, when should an entrepreneur implement a bookkeeping system? Oh, great question. From day one. Okay, immediately. Today. And immediately. <laughs> immediately, because there are things that you could take advantage of, like right now, mm-hmm. that you're not, if you're a new entrepreneur, that you're not aware of, mm-hmm. right? Because you don't have a bookkeeping system mm-hmm. in place. But if you start tracking your finances from day one, you may be able to take advantage of so many tax strategies mm-hmm. that if you wasn't tracking your finances, you missed out on, right? Or you can maybe lessen the time to grow and reach that profitable level Mm -hmm. because you have a clear financial visibility into what's going on into your business. So I always say from day one, Mm -hmm. even if you're by yourself, you can use to start an Excel spreadsheet. Then you can get to the point where you have an accounting system or you hire a bookkeeper. But from day one, you you want to have the habit of managing your money right. Right, and QuickBooks would be a good place mm-hmm. to start as yes. well because yes. I think they have a reasonably priced monthly. Yes. So you know, start somewhere, and if during this conversation Miss Octavia stepped on your toes a couple times, that means you need to give her a call. <laughs> <laughs> so tell everyone how they can stay connected with you. Yes, so you can definitely go to our website at sayyestoprofits dot com. Um, our Say Yes to Profits podcast is on YouTube and then Instagram as well at Octavia Connor. CFO. Perfect, perfect. So make sure that you connect with Octavia because this is the season to take your finances even more seriously. I feel like, you know, with the pandemic, we saw how uncertain things can get. Mm -hmm. One day, everything could be normal, and then tomorrow, it could be, you know, just a mess, chaotic. (laughs) And you want to be prepared. You want to have enough stowed away so that you can, you know, weather whatever storms may come. And having these systems that she's talking about is imperative to doing that. So make sure you follow her, you visit her site, you go ahead and book a discovery call, get on the phone with her so that you can at least start taking some steps towards that multiple six-figure profit, okay? We want to say yes to profits, all right? (laughs) So again, if this was your first time tuning in, I am Lily May, creator of the Glambitious brand. You can stay connected with us by visiting theglamceo.com. That's theglamceo.com. And you can follow me on Instagram at I am Lily May. So thank you again for tuning in to the Glambitious Talk Show. Bye-bye.